Hey guys, Gus here, and this is just a quick video on how to prepare glazes. This is going to be one of the videos that will underpin my painting tutorials um, because it is the technique that I use most often. Okay, is controlled glazes. Now, for this demonstration, I'll be using some coat to arms blue paint, which is the same as I believe it's um, enchanted blue from um, Citadel, exactly the same paint. I'll also be using some acrylic medium, and this is. Um, the Lamy medium just in a dropper bottle to make it easier. Okay, so to prepare a glaze, all it is generally is you try and, depending on the, the color of the paint, generally the darker the color, the more medium you'll use. But generally it's a one to one ratio, okay? So you put down a bit of paint, okay? And for this we'll just try one drop of, uh, of medium, okay? This is to prepare your glaze, okay? So actually we'll do two. Two just for a giggle, there we go. Okay, so you mix it all together. Okay, and you'll notice this will thin the paint down quite considerably. Now the reason I'm using this and not water is because the um, the flow properties and the surface tension will change. And acrylic medium is specifically designed for this. That's the whole point of acrylic medium. Water is not. Water is water. Okay? You drink water. You don't drink acrylic medium. Okay? So, and this, you'll notice, right, that this, and you can see it on the camera here, it's extremely thin paint. Okay? But this isn't even thin enough to be a glaze. Okay? So I'm actually going to double this up. So I'm going to say four drops. So you, you look, so now you see just how thin these paints are, okay? And I'll, I'll go on to actually, you, you know, actually using glazes in a minute. So, so, okay, so, so now we're approaching more of the consistency that you need, okay? So you, you'll see how, how this paint flows, okay? When I use it on the edge of this white palette, okay? So it's actually almost a semi-transparent paint, okay? And the way that I like to test my glazes is I actually use it on a bit of my skin. So hopefully you can, you can make, make up the, um, the sort of the lines of my skin there and I actually test it like that and I just put it on my skin and you can see how it flows into all the crevices and the recesses and just leaves a light coat of pigment above that okay wipes off really easily okay so that's how to prepare glazes so that's the sort of consistency you're looking at you're looking at sort of a milky consistency okay and it will depend on the colour so darker colours generally need more medium and you see how little paint I actually use then how much I've got left here it's, it's a huge amount okay it's it's you know massive amounts so you hardly need to use any paint you, you go through a lot of medium obviously so so yeah, so the lighter colors generally need less thinning and the darker colors will need more. So to use glazes then, um, there's, there's two kind of general ways you can, you can do them. So if you're doing traditional blending and highlighting, I'm not going to go through blending and highlighting because there's loads of videos on that. So if you're using traditional blending and highlighting and you're having problems with the gradient of the color, so you can't get it smooth enough, you can actually use glazes to, um, to smooth that out. So for example, if you've got a, a, a blue, a dark blue up to, up to a white, okay, and you'll, you'll see the, the color transitions in between. You can use the base blue color and use it as a glaze and just put it over the whole thing. And, and you normally do about two, uh, two or three coats of that and it will actually bring all the colors together. The disadvantage is it mutes all the colors so you, can, you don't get the same contrast. Okay, it makes it look more realistic, but it, it makes it very smooth. Okay, so the, the color transition is seamless. Um, but what I like to do is I actually use um, the controlled glazes essentially uh, method and I actually drag the paint and this ties into the, the, the little video I did before about using the, the correct brushes using good quality brushes and good quality paint with good quality medium um, because you need the paint to flow a specific way so what I'll do is I'll just demo it on this um, on this miniature over here really quickly so you'll see that this is a I think this is the old Adip Adiptus Arbites Enforcer so what you're looking at doing let me just bring some light down there we go there we go there we go so what you're looking at doing this, you can see the blue is quite dark, okay, so you need to decide where your highlight points are going to be, okay, so this one will just do the traditional highlighting of, you know, the everything further out of the miniature is going to be lighter and everything further in is going to be darker. So what we'll do is I'll just demonstrate um, how you'd use glazes really, really quickly on, um, on the, the end of his, on the end of his top over there, so it's the bottom lip, so you, you want the bottom lip to be higher okay then the then that sort of indent over there and then you've got another high point there so the way you use glazes then okay is you so you get your brush ready so you load your brush with paint test on your skin yep that's nice and thin you can see it flowing into the recesses there okay so that's good and all you're doing is you're literally dragging the paint okay like so so you can see there that the, the actual coats of paint are absolutely tiny they're really really small Okay, so you can see what I'm doing there, how small these coats of paint are. And they need to be controlled, that's the thing, okay. is you, They're not washers. People people use these like washers and they're not, alright. You, you don't want to be doing that because all will happen then is you'll end up with the opposite, okay. Because you're wanting, you're wanting the paint to flow 
out to the extreme areas, you don't want the paint to flow into the recesses because then you'll end up with lighter areas in the recesses naturally, won't you? So you need to control these, okay? And generally, with glazes, okay, it takes about three coats before you start getting that color transition. Okay, and this is all you're doing. And you can see that the sheen, okay, and the, when, you, when you're doing like a whole area, okay, so you, do, you work through all of this, by the time you get back to this, it's dry and you do another coat and another coat and then you can start making your glazes lighter and lighter and lighter and this way you end up with a completely seamless color transition I mean it, it is completely seamless the main thing is mistakes people make is they don't let it dry properly okay and they they don't thin the paint enough alright and the things with these as well is they're very very forgiving so like if you make a mess up because the paint is so thin and it takes so long to dry anyway you just wipe it off your finger it's easy Okay. The thing with this technique though is it requires patience. Okay, it does require patience because you're going back, you know, you're doing like three coats. Alright, you can see I just messed up there, I put too much paint on. Wipe the brush up on my finger and you just soak up the paint. Done. Easy. Mistake corrected. Okay. And like I said, it'll take like two or three coats of this, and then you'll end up with, with completely seamless colour transitions. So you'll notice with a heck of a lot of my stuff, I tend to use glazers. So I mean You've probably you've probably seen this miniature. Oh, I, I did I showcase this miniature before? So I mean, if you look at the color transitions with this, I mean, it goes from a uh, I use the purple to shade all of this down, and then up to an orange. So the color transitions, I try to get them as seamless as possible. And this is all using things like lasers. So this the thing with the skull as well. That's all. It's all using the same techniques. All using lasers. It's just a case of being patient. And the thing is with lasers, once you master lasers, okay, or controlled specific lasers applications thereof. Um, you can do just about anything, okay? Uh, Non-metallic metals, easy. OSL, easy. Well, object source lighting, sorry. Easy. Gems, easy. E all these techniques that people get, get, you know, caught up on are easy, okay? Once you've mastered glazers, some people have a problem mastering them. They, they can be a bit tricky, but really, once you once you practice a couple of times, you, they're not difficult, okay? So, yeah, and then then you can move on to all these other cool things, okay? And it's all the same principles. And then you can start playing around with colors and different complementary colors and analogous colors and all the, all the fun artistic stuff. Um, so yeah, so that is how to use glazes and use this as a reference video for when I start doing my painting tutorials um, very, very shortly. All right, guys, take care.